According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the total value of capital imported into Nigeria in the second quarter of 2016 was estimated at over $1 billion, an indication of Nigeria's dependence on imported goods. However, considering the economic realities in the country occasioned by dwindling price of oil in the global market, there's been efforts to diversify the economy. My guest on this week's episode of the program talks about government's efforts to encourage made in Nigeria goods. There. Thank you for joining me on the program this week. I'm Gloria Umezuke. The National Bureau of Statistics had recently announced that the nation's export trade had risen to 1.873 trillion naira in the second quarter of 2016. However, about 80% of that figure is from export of Nigeria's crude oil. Now, this is not what the federal government and indeed many Nigerians are expecting, as the new target for the export is on made in Nigeria products. Well, the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment explains what has been done to encourage local manufacturing industry. But coming up next. In its quest to address the nation's economic recession, the 22nd Nigeria Economic Summit considered issues around made in Nigeria goods. We'll take a listen. The chairman of the Nigeria Economic Summit Group. Captains of Industry. Bureaucrats, entrepreneurs and government officials are gathered in Abuja to discuss the nation's economy. This is the 22nd edition of the Nigeria Economic Summit and it's coming at a time when the country needs specific steps to turn around the nation's economy. This is an opportunity for us to swallow some pita pills and tell ourselves some hard truths. Unfortunately for us, our options are now limited. The theme of this year's edition of the summit is Made in Nigeria. The idea is to promote the consumption of Made in Nigeria goods, and this requires the engagement of the private sector, which should be backed by action. I note the Honorable Minister's comments about the private sector being the engine of growth and development, and I also note with gratitude his comments about the government being willing to encourage and support the private sector. I'm afraid presently that is not how it looks. Presently, the way it looks is this. You have uncertain policy attitudes towards private capital and markets. That cannot for much longer be allowed to continue. That action came when President Muhammad Buhari sought the summit's position on how to revive local industries and make the nation less dependent on import. We need to diversify the economy so that we never again have to rely on one commodity to survive as a country so that we can produce the food we eat, make our own textiles, produce most of the things we use, and create the right environment for our young people to be able to innovate and create jobs through technology. After three days of discussions, the summit ended with recommended action plan. These plans are the full implementation of the proposed Presidential Council on ease of doing business, fast-tracking the passage of bills and amendment of acts that improve ease of doing business, the establishment of the National Research and Innovation Fund, enactment of a legislation to support the takeoff of the new development finance institution, the central bank advised to review the list of items excluded from the forex market, the presidency and Niger Delta state governments were urged to urgently take pragmatic steps to end the Niger Delta crisis to boost oil production. I had a 
conversation with Mrs. Aisha Abubakar on the back of the just concluded National Economic Summit. Mrs. Aisha Abubakar, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have the economic indices looking very far from ideal and, of course, a desperate uh, move to, to change the, the nation's economy source. How exactly do we use Made in Nigeria to improve the state of the economy? Economic indices from this quarter have risen a little, if just slightly, but are improving. And this is because we've seen a positive response to the economic changes that we're going through at the moment. And I say this because it's because our SMEs are seizing the opportunity. They've seen this as a time for them to evolve, for them to come up and start doing little, little things. So sometimes they say when you're pushed to the end, then you tend to be creative about how you intend to continue to survive. And we've seen this move or we've seen this stimulus happening with the SMEs. And a lot of SMEs are doing basically made in Nigeria, local patronage. They're doing things with our raw materials. They're doing the value addition so we can start to consume. And we're hoping to find ways to escalate this that would help the economy move in the right direction. The very SMEs you mentioned, of course, are equally crying out, you know, complaining of lack of infrastructure to you know, continue business. Of course, we even have local businesses. We have a lot of them on the line who complain of lack of funding, complain of basic infrastructure to continue, and even the government's um, not enough um, show of support to help them continue business. How is this going to happen? I think what is happening is now for the SMEs and the government to come on and align the activities with the enabling environment. Um, a lot is ongoing to support the SMEs. Infrastructure is not a problem we can solve today, but we're working on it. We're looking at creating more special zones. Uh, we're looking at upgrading some of our centers, our industrial centers, so that we can have places where we have infrastructure, road, water, electricity, at least for the manufacturers or the industries there to thrive. We're also looking at relationships with the Ministry of uh, Agri, Ministry of Water Resources, and Ministry of Transport, just to ensure that some attention is focused. Obviously, this won't come to play until 2017 because we all know what has happened to our budget in 2016. But all these plans are, are, in, are, in, uh, are in the pipeline. Furthermore, in terms of policies, we're also looking at what policies we can as a quick measure. We can to enable these SMEs to, to, to thrive. For example, we're looking at the SME broad framework as well to see what it is from the micro to the small. And one of the kind of support we've done now is, and the National Assembly has also helped us, is a local patronage bill, pro uh, public procurement bill. It's gone. We're all waiting for the first public hearing where we all have input. I know even as far as the presidency also, a lot of efforts are being made for local patronage. But what the ministry now is saddled with is trying to assess the capacity. Because it's one thing to say, everybody go for made in Nigeria. It's another thing, after two months, you look for those products and they're not on the market. So we have to ensure how soon before we come out publicly and say, everybody go for made in Nigeria. And then, it, so it has to be in phases. But all these are all in the pipeline. We've got a lot of challenges to surmount, really. How, 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 how do you think we're going to get there, even when 2017 comes? I said we're going to target specific areas. For example, if I take the textile industry, you have them in Ikurudu. What are their major challenges? Electricity, infrastructure. I mean, electricity, smuggling, major ones. We're trying to address. We're working very closely with the customs. And I'm glad to report that there has been some reduction in the smuggling of textile materials. We're a little bit more competitive because the smuggling has been mitigated to a certain extent. We're working all across borders. We met with the president of Benin, for example, last week. And he's also very wanting, very keen on trying to see that we, our borders are not so porous. Because we all know what it means to our economies when all these things are happening. So there's a slight, slight improvement in the textiles industry. And our, and our people are telling us that, yes, there's a little bit. Of course, they want more. It's not enough to ginger them to go back into food production. 
but it is ongoing. The federal government is seeking um, global investors in Nigerian economy. And so we want to find out, you know, with the little lofty ambitions and the little efforts the government is making at the moment, what sort of investments are we getting? Can you describe, um, for instance, our FDI at the moment? Or you go and market Nigeria as it were, like we did in China or like we did in India. There are certain conditions that need to be met. And as you know, Nigeria, we've been going through with our dollar going up and up. It's been difficult to meet certain conditions. But I'm glad to see that China, I think we're ready to sign off with China. I know ADB, we're ready to sign off with ADB. They've promised us we're going to get some money in this October. Their board sits this October. The president was here two or three weeks ago, and he's promised us to do that. So with the World Bank, the minister has just come back from, from those meetings. I'm sure we'll have good news. I've seen some on the, uh, on the um, media, so social media. So I'm, I'm very positive that something will come up. But I know definitely that before the end of this year, we would see some, not as much as we had hoped, and then the timing, but definitely we'll see some. How much um, work are you doing with uh, ministries? Like you just, you said earlier that you're partnering with other, other ministries, other sectors, you know, to make this happen. What's the synergy like? The synergy now, I think, is um, more strengthened than it has been before because we're all on the same page, perhaps because of the way the economy has been, we all have to be on the same page. So we're working very closely with the Ministry of Agriculture, we're working very closely with the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Water Resources, Transport, you know, all the relevant ministries that we know can do. We're looking at targeted projects, we're not doing individual projects because we've realized that if we do that, we will not be able to get the kind of, um, the kind of result or the kind of uh, stimulus in the economy that we would get. But if we all partner, as I mentioned earlier, for example, the railways, if we can do the Lagos Canal and completely, you can imagine the amount of movement of goods and services. The multiplier effect of that on our SMEs would be amazing. That's all made in Nigeria. But if we want to go and just do a, uh, a road somewhere that would not have a major impact, then it defeats the purpose. So we're all targeting the same areas. We're targeting crops the same. If agriculture says we're doing rice, Minister of Industry is saying value addition, what can we do, you know, and so on. We're not saying, okay, you do rice, and then we're going to go off and do something totally different. No, mining is saying this is what we're doing. We're doing um, iron, we're doing this, and we're saying, good, we'll now come up with a policy for you so that we can all be on the same page. So we're all working together. Do you also get the same uh, cooperation from state governments? Because let's not forget, the elites, the politicians, are the first culprits, you know, when it comes to not embracing made in Nigeria. Well, talking about the states, I can talk about Kebi State, see what they've done with the rice. I can talk about Ogun State, see what they're doing with the school feeding program. So everybody is keying into it. Kaduna State is open for business. A lot of people are going to Kaduna State to look at how vital or how, how fertile the lands are. So, I mean, I think... You know, something about the economy, as I said earlier, something, when something happens, we all have to sit up and do our own bit. And if we don't do it now, then I don't know when we're going to be able to do it. Let's talk about now doing business you know, in Nigeria. That trading balance that we see at the moment, how are you trying to bridge that disconnect? Um, unfortunately, I think this is one area that would take us a longer time to be able to, to bridge, but we're working towards it. We're looking at the respective agreements that we've signed. We're trying to see how we can enforce them because agreements, when you look at them, tend to be fair and equal. But the implementation of it tends to be lopsided. And this is probably because we've neglected so many of the sectors and been, we've been an import dependent economy. So therefore, everything that we want to consume, we've tended to import it instead of produce it. And that definitely will affect our, our trade balance. But we're hoping to see some changes in the next two to three years when we've built more capacity, when more institutions are coming up, when our quality is accepted. What sort of institutions? Like the quality infrastructures that I mentioned earlier, we're having them so that we can draw up standards. Once we have standards and we're able to accredit our, our products, then we can compete. It's all about being able to compete globally. But now, some certificates we don't have, some standards we don't have, and then the international world tells us that you don't have this, you don't have that, and that, you know, puts us back at the, at the bank benches. Okay, hold on with your thoughts. We're still with the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment. We'll be right back on this. Join us again. <laughs>